Now, I really hope you're enjoying this, and I don't mean to go quickly through this, but that's part of the reason you're looking at a video that you can pause, rewind it, go back and forth. Now, here's another thing I want to share with you before we go forward. As great as my training is, and I really do mean it is the best training you'll find any place, do not spend more than half hour, 45 minutes watching my videos. Don't do that. Don't spend hours and hours watching. Spend hours and hours practicing. That's how you get good at this stuff. That's how I get good at this stuff. You know, back in the day, 87, 88, pull, pulling my hair out at 2 o'clock in the morning, I had a better chance in 1988 of getting uh, George Bush, actually Reagan was still in office back then, uh, before Bush took over, I had a better chance of getting Reagan on the phone than I did, uh, you know, getting anybody else on the phone, especially Adobe back in those days. So you want to talk about frustration, to quote Bill Clinton, I feel your pain, I feel your pain. All right, enough of the impressions. So what I want to share with you is for every half hour to 45 minutes of watching my video, spend two, three hours, practice, practice, practice. Make mistakes. I don't encourage mistakes, but that's how you, it's okay to make mistakes. That's how we learn. I can't tell you how many great techniques I came up with because I stumbled into something or I wasn't paying attention and I did make a mistake. We learn from our mistakes. That's a good thing. Okay, now here's what we need to do. Okay, I'm gonna hit the shift tab key. And I want to convert everything to percentages. Well, how can I convert this to percentages? Shift tab, if this is 597 pixels and this is 363, I mean, I'd be driving myself insane. So here's a very simple math equation that we can do. I'm just going to select all, Command A, select all, and I'm going to change everything to 1,000 pixels wide. Now, how does that help us? Well, it helps us because now we know exactly a percentage of a thousand. Now I could have made this a hundred pixels wide and the reason I didn't go a hundred pixels wide because then it's going to get too small for us to really see what I'm doing. But if you temporarily convert this, we're not saving the file, you temporarily convert this to it 1000 pixels wide. Now you know this moved the decimal point over one. This is now it needs to be 62.1 percent. And this needs to be 378. So watch this. If I take 62.1%, I'm just going to take that number and copy it. And I add that to this number, plus paste, I come up with, um, hang on there, I just screwed things up because I think my properties were not set up properly. Oh, I don't want to take the, oh, I want to come out of the eyedropper for a second here. Uh, that was the problem. I was in the eyedropper, and the eyedropper was doing some funky things. Plus, paste, return key. I'm in the scale tool. That's why they did that. Let me just go to the selection tool. Oh, my apologies here. Plus, paste, tab key. Okay. Now, 999 pixels, I mean, there was a fraction in there, so that's why I did what it did. But what I want to share with you is if you convert everything to 100, then you know that that's the percentage. Now, for those of you, I'm going to revert this to the last eight version. For those of you, and take no offense, if you slept through fourth grade math class, this next step is probably really going to hurt your head. Another way of figuring out a percentage to the exact width, which you can do in Dreamweaver, by the way, because Dreamweaver lets you do the math right inside the dialog boxes. For those of you that have been working in Dreamweaver for 5, 6, 10, 12 years and didn't, nobody ever taught you that, here's another thing we can do. You take your larger number, your smaller number, divide it by your larger number. So what do I mean by that? Well, again, when we took this out to, uh, let's do this again so you can see this. I'm going to make that a thousand percent. So this is six, uh, 621, 62.1 percent. So just remember that for a second. So if I take this number, <clears throat> that's the width of this pixel, and the width of my document is 960. So if I take that divided by 960, I'm taking the smaller number, dividing it by the larger number, and I get that right on the money. Now, part of the reason that this is all flipping out here. Because if I show my options, I want to take this align to pixel thing off. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. So let's undo that for a second. Again, top right menu. I'm going to show all my options and take this align to pixel off. Otherwise, it's going to want to snap to that pixel. So if you take this and divide that by the width of my document, which is 960, you get exactly the percentages right there. So again, that's just another way to do this. And this is a great way to do it when you're in Dreamweaver and you got your pixel width and you want to convert that to percentages. Now, a good example of that, 
Many of you had designed websites from back in the day, five, six, seven, eight years ago, that maybe you're still up and running, and the client goes, wait a second, I now need to take my old, tired website from five, six, eight, 10, 12, 15, 30, 40, 60, 60 years. Wait a second. Do we have the web 60 years ago? Hmm, maybe somewhere they did. But anyway, you want to take that old, tired, pixel width design, or worse yet, was built in tables way before div text. That's exactly how you do it. You take your smaller number divided by the width that you're intended to do, and that becomes your percentage. It's as simple as pi. It's whole number math. It works every time. So I can take this information, and I can save that. So let's go to the file menu. Let's export this, and I can export this as a PNG file. A PNG file or a JPEG file, whatever I feel more comfortable. JPEG file is going to take up a little less space. However, if you look through here, you'll see that I don't have the option for a JPEG file. For that, I would have to go to File, Save for Web. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take the easy way out and just go to Export and export this as a PNG file. And 72 DPI is great. Any kind of transparencies we have. So now we can take that and bring that into a Dreamweaver document for tracing image. But again, I can't overemphasize how flexible now keep in mind, shift tab, we're just touching the surface here. This is very new to pretty much all of you, but I just want to share with you the flexibility of this program. It's amazing. So let's say here, you know what? I'm not going to do a slideshow. Maybe I have a secondary layout that I want to put five boxes across with 20 pixels in between. Ouch. How do I do that one? The same exact way. Command option equal. I hit the tab key. I have one of five columns, tab down to 20 pixels in between, and just like that, I'm good to go. Why reinvent the wheel? Why not let the software work for you? So you can come up with any type of design. In fact, in closing here, because these are the techniques you'll get when you sign up for my course. If you don't think my courses are worth it, think, you know what, hang out on YouTube and watch a bunch of free videos and yada, yada, yada. And six months from now, when you're struggling for work, I, I hate to share some tough love with you, but let me know how that's working out for you. So one of the things Illustrator enables you to do is you can have multiple different artboards. You can actually have response to design artboards inside the same document, which is really pretty cool. So we just scratched the surface, but more importantly, it understands how Illustrator thinks. So in closing, let me show you some really cool techniques here. I'm going to hit L key. And my client wants to build a flower logo. Here's a very simple way to do this. First of all, I'm going to build a yellow logo. So I'm just going to change that to yellow. Double click on here and just like make this a yellow color. Great. So now I'm going to hit Shift C. Shift C is a convert direction point tool. And I'm just going to make these so these are little points. Hold on, Command key. Now what I want to be able to do is I'm now going to go and transform this. So I'm going to go to the Effect menu effect menu transform and transform so let's do this again anything about the effect is under the effect menu effect transform and transform dialog box now I want to transform this from the bottom not the center from the bottom so I click right here now this is covered extensively in my illustrator master course and this is how you get good at this stuff so I want to have a flower type of logo that has, I don't know, pick a number. How many petals do I want? Do I want, uh, oh, oh, I do How about 11? Great, 11. How many degrees in a circle? 360. Great, 360 divided by 11 is this number right here. Okay, so how many times do I want to copy it? Well, ye of little faith here. Okay, I'm going to hit the preview menu for a second and share with you a really cool thing. Well, if I want a total of 11, I already have one, so the answer to this is 10. And just like that, I have my 10 copies. Now, if I hit the up arrow key, I'm going to have more copies or less copies. So now I have less copies. If I want more copies, more so I'd say I want to do a half a logo. Well, there you go. And all the way around. Now, all this is going to do is just keep going around. But the correct answer to this is I want to copy this 10 times. Now, what I could do from here is I can move this horizontal or vertically. Now, rather than guess with your numbers, you can hit the up arrow key and move this down or the down arrow key and move this up. So if you want to put some more space in between here, very simple way you can do it. Now, keep in mind when I hit the up and down arrow key, and the up and down arrow key is magic inside of Illustrator. Because any dialog box, I can finesse up or down using the up or down arrow keys. But here's how it works. 
If at the down arrow key, it's going to go down and the up arrow key is going to go up. Oh, thanks for telling us that, Robert. I didn't know that before, that the up arrow key went up and the down arrow key went up, down. But if I hold down the shift key, I can go up in higher increments and lesser increments. So look at that. I can get all kinds of stuff happening. So if I was to scale this with the up arrow key, I would get something like this. In the down arrow key, I'd get something like that. Now here is the super cool part. What I've done here is I created this really cool graphic that I could turn around and use for my logo. But if I hit Command Y right now, wireframe, view, preview, Y, Command Y, the only thing I have is this little object. Everything else is mathematics. It actually doesn't even exist except in Illustrator. This is really cool. If I go to my R for rotation tool, pick a point to rotate from, I can actually rotate this out. And Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. I will show you things that I don't care how long you've been working in Illustrator. I guarantee you don't know what I know. I don't mean to sound cocky. I don't mean to sound so full of myself. But I've been there. I've been in the trenches. I've been doing this for a long time. In fact, in closing, let me say this. Let me pat myself on the back one more time. Back in 91, 92, I got so good at this. And keep in mind, I'm totally, totally 100% self-taught. Never read a book in my life. Never took a computer class in my life. Didn't touch a computer for the first time until I was almost 27 years old. So I was so good at this that back in the early 90s, Adobe, yes, Adobe from the Adobe.com, those guys, they hired me to go out to California to teach their staff and their master guys and everybody else how the best way to use Illustrator and Photoshop. So if Adobe's going to hire me to do that back in the 90, 91, 92, just think what you'll learn from my courses. If you want to be better than the next guy, if you want to outthink, outperform, if you want to charge more per hour, here's the way to do it. Because if you can get things done, zippity doo da bang bomb pay me, you're way ahead of the game. Now, I did mention, by the way, Command Y, that this is a one file. That this is not, I actually can't select this and this separately. Well, or can I? Well, let's think about this. What I can do, anything about the object is under the object menu. Okay? I can expand the appearance of that object, and just like that, now I can, Command Y, get separate objects. Now, unfortunately, the price you pay with that, I'm going to command Z to undo that, is I can't go back again. But I can hold down the Option key and drag this over and then put that into a separate layer that I can go back and tweak later. So now if I select this, anything about the object is under the Object menu and expand the appearance. And now I can do all kinds of cool things with color. So as an example, I can select this object and this object. And I'm just going to make this object a darker version of yellow. So if I select this, in fact, let's let's lock this object, Command 2. Okay, so how do I, here's a pop quiz, how do I select these other objects without locking these? Well, anything about the selection is under the Select menu. So I can select things with the same fill. So I'm going to select Same Fill. And now that they're selected, they can be affected. Under the Edit menu, Edit Colors, and I'm going to Blend vertically. And there's my vertical color blend. Now these happen to be the same color, so that's not really happening too well. But if I was to take these odd colors right here and move this out and then select edit, edit colors and blend vertically. And I get some really cool things happening. So you can use that for your logo, anything you want. Again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. But if you really want to get good at this, and I mean, be a complete rock star master at this, take my courses. You will not find these techniques anyplace else. Thank you for being here. My name is Robert Farrell. I will have special incentives at the bottom of this video. You can take my all access course right now on Think, Learn, Earn, which you get every single piece of Adobe software that I teach, which I teach everything. Don't spend much time these days teaching Flash because Flash is really not the industry standard anymore. Okay, so I really don't teach Flash anymore. I stopped teaching that about three years ago. So, but every other Adobe program I teach, I also teach all the WordPress, applications, plugin, ultimatum themes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I also teach PHP, e-commerce, using Web Assist tools, and also the very important thing, if you're serious about making money, I go deep into SEO, marketing, sales, Google Web Tools, Webmaster Tools, one-stop shopping. So I'm the guy you can lean on when you're trying to sit there and figure it out. Why do you want to do that? What, you want to spend half your life searching the web? I've been there. I've done that. I'm sharing all the techniques that you need. All the skills that are going to make you money. My training has one goal in mind. 
to teach you marketable production skills that are going to make you money. So you can get my Oxus course, every single thing I teach from now until for the rest of my life. Hopefully the rest of my life is a long time from now. For one fee, $299. Now, if you can't afford that, I get that, I understand that, I respect that. So I would like to think that if you're serious about learning this, if you have to borrow money or get loose change down the cows from your grandmother, uh, then give me $99 today. I will bill you $20 a month for the next 10 months, not a subscription base. Pay me $99 today. Get instant access to all my courses on thinklearner.guru. Then pay me 20 bucks a month for the next 10 months and everything is yours. No more payments. That's an offer you can't refuse. Now, if you're in a position where you can't afford 20 bucks a month, if I can offer some tough love, then maybe this is not for you and maybe you need to go do something else. But if you're tired of paying subscription rates all the time and every year for you know other websites, I won't mention lynda.com, paying 275, 350 every single year and getting long-winded, not to the points, I share with you the same techniques I use to solve issues for my clients. And more importantly, in closing, it's like on-the-job training. Thank you very much for being here. Sign up for the link below. If you're not, if you got uncles, or I'm sure you got people in your life that aren't making money, they'll make money with my courses. Just take them, but put time into learning. Meaning, every half hour to 45 minutes of watching my videos, spend two to three hours of practice, practice, practice. Thank you for being here. My name is Robert Farrell. Think, learn, earn, and Carpe diem.